Hi guys, my name's Laura and I'm the Specky Seamstress. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you this bundle of goodness, um, which are all projects that I have been experimenting with ice dyeing. Now, ice dyeing was not something I knew about <laughs> at all <laughs> until about three weeks ago. Um, I happened across it. You know how normally Instagram just missed the mark entirely with targeted ads? I get loads of diet targeted ads fitness um okay i do get holiday ones that's fair but this was like right on the money it wasn't even really a target ad it was like recommended posts for you or something um and it was ice dyeing and i've been interested in trying um natural dyeing and dyeing and uh, fabric painting and things but i'd never heard of ice dyeing and i just immediately <laughs> got really excited by it and decided to give it a go and as you can see by the pile got kind of hooked on it so I thought I would give you my kind of first explorations into ice dyeing now before we get started I just want to apologize that um, I've been gone for a, a little while and um, I haven't been feeling very well and I've been busy starting my new job so yeah I just haven't haven't been able to kind of film but hopefully now back on a reasonably regular schedule I've got lots of uh, sewing to talk about and lots of fabric to show you and um some other interesting ideas for videos as well coming up and also to apologize for those of you that are waiting for my flint dungaree sew along i have been making a whole bunch of flint dungarees as if you follow my instagram you will know <laughs> um, i've been making six as a batch production but i did film and I, so i did film um a sew along like footage for a so long but I've been trying to edit it and I've been looking back at it and it's just I'm not very happy with it so I think I might film a so along having thought a little bit more about my setup and my camera and things soon but that might be on hold a little bit just while I kind of settle into work and while life gets back to normal a bit so apologies it is still something I want to do but I only want to do it if I think it's valuable and I just didn't really think the footage I had was valuable. So onwards to ice dyeing. <laughs> so ice dyeing is sort of a, a tie dye effect on a on a fabric and it works for all natural fibres so cotton, viscose, wool, linen, is that a good coverage of natural fibers? I think so. And I've tried it on a few different bases now. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the differences and yeah, just my experience with it and, and what to do because it is just stunning. I mean, let me just show you some of the beautiful patterns you get because basically what you do is you put ice on top of a fabric that has been treated. I'll talk about that in a second. And then you sprinkle powdered dye over the top. And then you leave it for hours <laughs> or if you're like me you watch it consistently for hours because it's really fun to watch and then as the ice melts the powder reacts with the ice and reacts with the fabric to produce these beautiful like watercolor-esque designs on the fabric and they will depend on how you fold and twist and drape the fabric and um, how much ice you put on what size ice you put on and how much and obviously what colors of dye so i saw a, just a beautiful ice dye project it was actually with snow and i just thought yeah i i want to do that i want to try it and i had a little bit of a look into it and a little bit of a kind of research I mean, research is probably over selling it a little bit. I looked on Google and Pinterest for a bit and discovered the things that you needed to pick up. So I said that you need to treat the fabric. You need to treat the fabric with soda ash or a soda ash water solution, um, which not only kind of cleans the fabric and takes away any dirt or oil or residue, but also um, makes the fabric more receptive to the dye and allows the dye to set properly because if you do this from what I've been told and from what I've read this is a colour fast dye because the dye that you use is a fibre reactive dye so you have to use a powdered dye and um, RIT dye 
do a version and they also have a blog post talking about how you do it but you can buy now i'm going to pronounce this wrong but it's a uh, procyon pro procyon p-r-o-c-i-o-n mx dye is not a brand it's just like the type of dye and it means that it's fiber reactive so it actually chemically bonds to the fabric so it isn't just a paint that you're applying it is like a bond with the with the fabric which is really cool actually because it means theoretically this is color fast um, now I haven't really put that to the test yet because I haven't made garments to wear but I will be and I will keep you updated on the process as I kind of develop this and keep going um, so what you need to do is soak the fabric um, in the soda ash, ash and water solution it's a warm warm to hot water solution um, and I've seen varying things as to how long you're supposed to dye that or treat the fabric for um, most commonly it's kind of 15 to 30 minutes but I have seen a few places say you need to do it for several hours um, and one place even that said you needed to do it overnight now I think that probably depends a little bit on your fabric if you're getting brand new fabric from the manufacturer and you've then washed it like as you would normally wash it for um, shrinkage before you make a project then I don't think you need to worry too much perhaps if it's an older fabric you can use this technique with pre-made garments because it doesn't shrink the fabric or anything then um maybe you need to soak it for a little bit longer but i've kind of on average soaked it for half an hour ish um basically as long as i can physically restrain myself because i'm really excited and i want to get started on the project <laughs> so you know i've not been leaving it for hours and hours <laughs> And once you've soaked uh, the the project, you need to um, rinse out the, or not rinse out, but squeeze out any excess solution and leave the fabric damp. Now, from what I gather, you can do this with dry fabric, but a wet fabric makes for much kind of more natural, um, more kind of flowy <laughs> designs because it's kind of, it helps the ice to melt um, more kind of, softly i suppose more yeah more like this it's really pretty <laughs> is all i'm gonna keep saying i'm just gonna show you bits of this now because i was quite excited about this i ordered when i was ordering some fabric from pound fabrics i ordered a three meter piece of white cotton twill which is this and in my head i thought well if it doesn't work i've not wasted very much money and if it does work, then twill is quite a versatile uh, fabric base. You know, I'll be able to make dungarees or shorts mm -hmm. or even a dress. It's not a really heavyweight um, twill, although it does have some structure to it, as you can see. And I thought, well, I'll just I'll see how I go with it, basically. And then with the dye, you can buy the packets in um, by by the gram, basically. And I bought mine on eBay. I'll link the seller down below and you can buy 10 gram packs or 25 gram packs seem to be the most normal and i was like how oh, 10 grams is nothing i'm definitely gonna have to order a 25 gram packet and i'll tell you i ordered like four different blues a turquoise a green no four i think i ordered six packets they were four pound a packet and for this first one that i used I put all of the colours on <laughs> and other than I think I only sprinkled a tiny bits tiny bits of the yellow on so you can see there are some places that have yellow oh just look at it it's just too beautiful I am going to pop in some pictures of this because it is quite hard for me to kind of wrangle these um pieces of fabric particularly some of them that are bigger this is a one and a half meter piece so I cut the um the cotton twill into two pieces because partly because it was easier for me to dye in a slightly smaller piece and partly because i thought well i might learn something on this one and do it differently next time so in order to set the dye up you sprinkle the you you kind of fold and twist and crumple um the fabric up over a drying rack of some kind now i used something that happened to be in our kitchen that I think was supposed to be some kind of uh that crockery drying rack but has been sat on the top of our shelves for a while and i just decided that i would adopt that <laughs> and a and a then a container to put that into to catch any excess liquid 
Now, the first couple of times I did this, I did this outside. Um, I popped it into uh, what I think is a beer bucket <laughs> that we used for our wedding that we've just had sitting around for a little while and I've adopted as a craft thing. Um, and so I, I wrapped and folded and twisted the fabric on top of that and then covered it in ice. Now, the idea is you cover it as much as well as properly as you can because any blank areas will probably end up mostly white which is not a problem but you know it's it's best to try and cover it as much as you can now you can use any type of ice or snow on this crushed small little bits will give finer kind of details and more bleeding between dyes or big chunks blocks of ice that you can get um you know from like what they you buy bags of party ice uh, will give slightly larger and i used some ice that we had left um from some kind of party bag ice and also some um ice that i just froze in containers and smashed up with a rolling pin outside of my garden my neighbors probably thought i was absolutely nuts <laughs> um but that's fine so this is how it came out it was absolutely beautiful now a lot of the things i'd read said you needed to leave this overnight um i didn't mostly because all of the ice had already melted and i could see by lifting up the drying rack that the color had filtered all the way through to the bottom of the fabric i think this varies obviously massively on the temperature the size of the project the size of the ice and i think a lot of the places i'd read you needed to do it overnight were places that were using snow and doing it outside which means it's cold <laughs> and it therefore takes longer to melt so I left this for about six hours um, and yeah it's absolutely beautiful now what happens once you have melted all the ice and everything is through is that you need to rinse it now at this stage I've read various things one rinse hot water first and um, that sets the dye that's there and then rinse cold to rinse out any extra um, extra excess dye and vice versa so take your pick i have done hot first every time and then cold and it works fine so that would be my advice for you um, but please do tell me if you've had experience of doing that either way and whether there's any difference and then you need to leave it to dry now as it dries it does mute it mutes over over the course of its drying so this was very very bright when i first hung it up to dry which i'll pop in a picture and then it's muted down into this really beautiful kind of like water type design and i'm very excited about that i don't quite know what i'm going to use it for yet um because i could make dungarees with it and they would be pretty cool but i just want to use it for something special um yeah i really really like it so i'd love your recommendations because i'm really really happy with that and then the next one i did was just the other half of that cotton twill um which i did without any of the greens so i just did the turquoise and blue and isn't it pretty it's just a really lovely like yeah watery design um and i used slightly slightly larger ice on this around the middle and then around the outside i used crushed ice i actually it was a great excuse to defrost my freezer and i like smashed up the freezer ice and got some of that out so you've got some like quite big design in the middle and then you've got all of these little beautiful kind of details on the inside so i'm still not sure what i'm going to use that for um but whatever it both of them become will be beautiful and it was so it was so nice to experiment with a craft and it go really well first time because that isn't always the case um, so then i got excited and i thought okay what fabrics can i put this on and how awesome is this going to be um and uh, let me show you all other things i've dyed so the next thing i dyed was this piece of habotai hab hab habotai silk um which i got from new craft house and i was going to use for something to pair with one of the silks I bought in New York but it was so thin and so fine that I decided it wasn't really right for it and I made this beautiful silk panel and I used um dark like navy and and blue and it has come out quite purpley which 
is really pretty actually silk takes the dye very well and I didn't need to put as much dye on as I did so there isn't as much kind of variation but you still get these really beautiful pieces um, and it's just stunning now this is destined to become a silk scarf for my mum I just need to conquer my fear of the rolled hem foot and then this will be a silk scarf for my mum and I think it's such a lovely weight for a silk scarf so hopefully she's excited by that <laughs> and then I got excited about jersey so I put in an order with Louboudou Fabrics who are like my go-to for plain solid colour jerseys because they're really high quality um, and really well priced mm -hmm. and I bought a two and a half metre piece of plain white um, jersey cotton cotton jersey and a metre and a half of um, sweatshirting or French terry and got to work basically and the French terry I went for all blues and greens and I've just got this absolutely stunning sweatshirt waiting to happen now which I'm going to pair with a bright teal sweatshirting that I've got from Satisfaction and make myself a hug hoodie and it will just be such a nice bright colourful um, jumper to keep me nice and cosy and warm mm -hmm. when I am working at home. And then the jersey, I bought an odd amount. <laughs> I bought a two and a half metre piece, which is unusual for me um, because two, like, two metres will do me a dress. Uh, so I don't know why I bought two and a half metres. Maybe I was having a moment of boldness and thought I could make myself a um, Sirocco jumpsuit in this because that would be, I mean, it would be bold. Um, by this time, as you can probably tell, I'd bought some more dye. So I went and bought three purple dyes, a lavender, a violet and a purple. I think it was just called purple. And I was experimenting a little bit with the kind of purples and blues together and black as well. I found black a really useful. You get these beautiful kind of greys from the black, which are just really lovely. And this is the biggest piece that I've dyed and it was quite hard to get all of the, to get ice to cover everything the way I'd folded it up. So as you can see, I do have some paler pieces here um, that have been missed, but I don't think that looks too bad. And I think it can be incorporated into the design. Now, I basically let my husband choose what I was gonna make with this in the end. And he chose a Joni dress. So I'm gonna make a Tilly and the Buttons Joni dress with this. And then I'll have about half a metre left over. And I think with that half a metre, I'm going to make myself some bras because who doesn't need a slightly mad tie-dye, but not tie-dye <laughs> bra set in their life. Uh, bra and knickers will be pretty cool, I reckon. I mean, cool is one way of putting it, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really excited by that. So it's just beautiful and it's taken the dye so well. So then I've just got three more pieces to show you, so I'll try and be quick. I was so happy with the way that the silk came out for the silk scarf that mum's going to make, but I really wanted to make myself a top. So I had a look on System in Taka and I ordered myself a metre of this Liberty, um, it's a silk a Dupion, uh, it's Ban Banaras silk. Um, and I didn't learn <laughs> from my first experience with silk and I still put on far too much or quite a lot of dye that I didn't really need so it's come out very saturated but I really love it it's a little bit pink for me um that I like pinker than I'd usually go for but I'm thinking like with a nice pair of dark jeans a camisole top in this will be beautiful and I think I'll do it so that the darker piece is on the front and the lighter sort of pinkier pieces on the back and I think then yeah, it will just be so nice. It's such a like sophisticated look, which is very unlike me. So I'm quite excited about that. Um, unfortunately, there's no more in stock of this at System and Tucker because I would love to experiment with, um, oh, <laughs> not eating it, um, a blue green version of this, but also a border print because then I got excited, I mean, I just constantly get excited really don't I um about the possibility of doing this as a border print so not the whole piece and I experimented with another jersey piece which is a two meter jersey piece and a woven viscose piece or viscose twill piece that I bought from oh so crafty 
and this was a bit of a lesson and a bit of a experiment which has gone quite well but slightly differently to how i expected and um, because the dye grew climbed a lot higher than i was expecting it to so what i did was i tied a knot in the top of the fabric and and draped that outside of the shower i was doing this in the bath but i moved to the shower in the spare room and um yeah I, so i draped it over the edge so that it wouldn't get dyed and wouldn't get any of the drips uh, falling down from it and then i folded up and draped and and crumpled up the bottom of the fabric and I'll, I'll be popping in some pictures of the kind of process as i did this as well and i was expecting it to grow a little bit but it grew i mean you can see here i stopped the dye about sort of here and it's grown properly all the way up to kind of here and it's actually dyed the whole piece of fabric you can see where i tied it that's where it's paler um but yeah it has dyed all of it now this was a meter piece of viscose twill it's absolutely beautiful though and i think it will make a really lovely top so i'm quite happy with that this was with some of the blues and obviously quite a lot of the purples and it's just come out really really beautifully so i'm very excited about that one and then the jersey also grew quite a lot my original plan for this was actually um to make a border print t-shirt so where most of the top was white but then there was a border at the bottom but this has grown i mean a good like 60 70 centimeters you can see where i finished the dye and it's grown kind of at least that again um and so i'm not sure that's gonna work so i think i might go back and do the same thing but dye the other end and then i'll have a bit more to play with because i think then i could do a front skirt from one side of the die a back skirt from the other side of the die and then the kind of sleeves and bodice of a dress from the middle where there's some white because i just think it'll be a bit too much white otherwise but oh, just look at how beautiful this is it's so lovely and i'm i just i'm really excited about the possibilities because i've now been trawling the instagram hashtag and pinterest for ice dye and ice dyed clothes and obviously you can do this on pre-made clothes and i do think that for the border print that might be a better way forward so i have managed to find some more silk um to use for another top and i think what i might do is make up a camisole top and then tie it out of the way even maybe wrap it in a bag or something and then mm -hmm. set up like a a pole across the bath <laughs> with a hanger on it so that i can rest the bottom of the fabric or, or bottom of the top on the drying rack where i put the ice um but don't do the rest of it so that's what i'm thinking um but also i've seen people dye like white denim jackets and t-shirts with logos on and shoes <laughs> and all kinds of things and i'm just super super excited so please tell me you're gonna have a go at this because it's just too fun and i can't have all of my clothes have ice dye so if i can live through some of yours as well that would be awesome um and tell me what you think i should make with some of these because yeah i'm just i'm excited to have them in my wardrobe and um, this i'm hoping to do a couple more videos about ice dyeing because i'd quite like to do some natural ice dyeing which i will talk more about <laughs> in that video um which i haven't started yet i haven't tried and i want to do um i also want to show you what i make with all of these things and i also want to show you dyeing some things that are already made up so that was ice dyeing in a nutshell or at least my first experience of it my experience has been great i love it i want to carry on doing it i think that's my summary <laughs> thank you so much for watching guys until next time bye